I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the GMM Takeover, the Swim Swam podcast. Joining me today is a seven-time Olympic champion, a man who I love and adore, but I'm very disappointed in at this very moment because a report just came out on Swim Swam saying that he has the fifth most followers on Instagram. My first question for you, buddy, is what's going on? You're an Olympic champion. Why are you fifth? There's probably 8 million things that I can list before Instagram followers is going to be a worry of mine. So I don't know. Maybe people don't like me, which is fine. Maybe people don't like my content, which is fine. I, I hate going on Instagram, to be honest. I like talking to people in person. So I do the best I can of like portraying myself how I actually am, but I'm not going to be posting twice a day or anything like that. It's, I don't like going on. It's annoying. So maybe, maybe that's why, or maybe people just don't like it. You'll be putting up more pictures like this, buddy. That's the thing. See, that's the thing is I even know, I know what gets more likes and I just can't even be bothered to post that. Like I get it. I get people want to see swim content and me shirtless and, and whatever, but no, I, that's all, that's all I live and breathe. So I get sick of it and I don't want to be throwing that in people's faces. So yeah, maybe that's why, maybe I need to put more shirtless to bump the follower count, but no, maybe I won't do that because maybe I don't want more followers. We're going to, we're, we're going to let people know we're going to, we're going to nerd it up a bit. We're going to, we're going to make you be a swim nerd for, for a few minutes so that people can enjoy that. But we do want to, uh, what, what, I, I do have to say this, the speedo thing that I saw on Instagram where you're playing the drums and they throw water at you. They're trying to help you, buddy. Oh, that was cool. Whose okay, idea was whose idea was that? That was um, oh gosh, I I think it was actually it was Speedo's idea. And when they when they first pitched it, I was like, no, like get me in, let because this was this was pretty soon before trials, and I was already in shutdown mode of like interviews, uh, photo shoots. And they pitched this idea and I was like, I'd rather do like as little as I can and then get me out of there. So it wasn't too long of a shoot. The speedo shoots are great. Honestly, they're very compared to some other, some other companies I've worked with. They're very, very regimented. You're on schedule. I mean, every photo shoot's hectic. So I was, it was a short one, but I was like pretty fried already. And the drum thing was supposed to be at the end. And they were like, do you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, like, let's do this. This will be fun. So they had a drum set set up that was, I think, one of the photographers there. And they kind of just let me do my own thing. And it turned out, it did turn out really, really cool. I, I, I've i been actually wanting to post that video. So I should, maybe that'll be my next post is the, I'll give you a little insight. Maybe I'll post a drum video. I'm looking up your account on Instagram because I feel sorry for you. It is Caleb Dressel. It's Caleb, if you're, if you're, if you're listening now and you're not following Caleb Dressel, shame on you. Um, follow him at, at Caleb Dressel. <laughs> He's uh he's got seven hundred three thousand followers. He needs to be a million in the next in the next few days or weeks, and he, he needs to he needs to be ahead of Federica Pellegrini because I don't know her account's pretty banging. And uh, <laughs> no no she is she 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 has a great account. And anyway that's all I'm gonna say about that. I'm very happy for your success. Let's talk about the Olympics because I'm sure you <laughs> you haven't talked about that at all since you've been to the Olympics, right? I haven't. Yeah, this is my first. This is my first interview, actually, about the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's just go through. First of all, you know, let's, let's, let's just rip the bandaid off. All right, when are you going to do a Dressel dissects on the hundred meter butterfly from the Olympic Games? Ooh, actually, I think my first my first one up, I think is going to be hundred free. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking once I get to Italy for ISL, I think I'm going to. I mean, I'm just going to do it off my phone. So I think I'll do it there. It'll be easier to upload as well because I'll probably have better Wi-Fi than what I have. So I think I'm going to do some when I'm in Italy, depending on how much downtime I actually have. Um, but we'll call it we'll call it within two weeks. Since you brought it up. Okay, so for listeners out there, Dressel Dissect's coming. Looks like the first one's going to be the 100-meter freestyle. Let's, let's talk about 100-meter freestyle. 100-meter freestyle, 4702.06 ahead of Chalmers. Buddy. Were, 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 or when, were you feeling the heat when he's coming home? What, what, what's, what's going on in your brain uh, on the last 15 meters, the hundred meter freestyle in the Olympic final? Yeah. I mean, I knew, I knew my race plan was going to be going into it no matter where, 
Um, no matter where the rusher next to me was, no matter where Kyle was, I, I you have a feel of who's going to be in the race before the race goes off. I'm not going to rule out anybody, but you have an idea. You can see how they swim the semifinal. Um, you can see how they swim in prelims. And Chalmers has been 47-0 before, so I knew he had it in him, you know. And it was that one was a little bit tricky because he was 47-8 in the in the semifinal. I was like, man, is he? Did he have a bad swim? Is he gassed? I was like, well, I know it's not because he's gassed. Um, so I knew Chalmers was going to be there. I know the Russian was going to be there. Uh, and I knew exactly what my race plan was. My race plan wasn't going to change. Um, but coming home that last 50, I could feel I could feel Chalmers' presence creeping up like he always does. Um, and I knew it was going to be a close race. I think that's those are the most fun races because you have less things to think about besides racing and beating the guy next to you. Um, I, that was the, actually the earliest I've ever put my head down in a race was hundred free. It was right at, if not right before 15 meters and it hurt, it hurt so bad. I, I, I feel like people have this idea that all those good races that you have, they don't hurt. Everything just feels amazing. No, especially not when you get older. I don't know, maybe when you're 13 or something like that, but it hurt. Uh, I mean, I felt it at 60 meters. I, I felt it big time and I got my race plan and that's the plan that I thought was going to work. And, you know, six, one hundred flip a coin. I think if our reaction time was the same off the blocks, we tied. So there's just so much, every little part that Troy was nagging me about every little detail. I mean, that's what happens every time. It's not, it's not bull crap at the end of the day because Troy's adamant on reaction time, reaction time, reaction time. And I'm not saying that's what won the race. It was every little detail within that meter of freestyle, but down to not just the finish, real time, my turn at the other end, my breakout, where I put my head down. Every little thing mattered, you know? So those hundreds, they do add up. I knew it was going to be close, and I was fortunate enough to get my hand on the wall first. You brought up how you felt. And uh, it was, it, I don't know if you, it's a second taper. Um, how did you feel you know, at trials compared to the Olympic Games? Just feeling, feeling through each race. Two completely different meets, you know. Every like it's re it really is hard to compare because you know trials holds a different pressure that the Olympics holds. You know, in a certain sense, trials is harder than some of the races at the Olympics. You know, so I mean, I remember four hundred free trials. I was ready to go. I knew I. Knew the two guys in that heat, I knew were going to be Blake and Apple. I mean, I knew that. I knew more so probably Apple. Um, and I knew once once I took it out and flipped, I was like, oh, like I, I I got this. You know, I knew Apple was going to move up, and he was going to hug that lane line. I gave him some crap for that. He was he was grabbing my feet the last fifteen, but um, super happy for Apple. I mean, goodness, he's he's been there. He's really he really is such a self made swimmer. Such a great guy. Uh, and held his own. I mean, shoot, I couldn't imagine my first Olympics stepping up and having to anchor American relays like that. I mean, I, I'd be, I'd be pooping myself now. I, so Apple, gosh, credit to him. Um, so trials was different. It was different competition. The ready room was different. I never shake anyone's hand before any race, um, unless I know they're going to be the ones getting not, not in an arrogant way, but I know unless they're going to be the ones getting second are going to be, those are going to be the guys to race. So I shook uh, Blake and Apple's hand. I said, let's like, let's do this. Let's go make an Olympic team. So that was a different field than hundred free. Um, but in a weird way, I think I was calmer mentally before my hundred free at the Olympics. Cause there's nothing I could do. I knew it was going to be a close race. I knew what I had to do to execute. My plan was there. It was just making it hurt and execute. That's the, that's the best tools I had in that situation to make, you know, make it work with how my body felt, which it, I mean, it wasn't great. I don't want to, I don't want to go on off a, a tangent on how I, I didn't feel like a, a God in the water at this meet or anything like that. It's not about that. Of course, nerves are going to throw everything off. Of course, eating the same food for a month is going to throw that off. Sleeping in a bed where your feet are hanging off. Like you can control so many more variables when you're at home and you're on bed training. So there's a lot, I mean, there's so much that goes into it. And I'm trying to get that through my head. I mean, this year I got married, COVID happened. I moved into a new house. Uh, there was a lot of big monumental life moments <laughs> that were, that were part of my life, including the Olympics this year and the pressure of being the guy, you know, whatever, whatever the heck that means. So 
it was different. Both were different. I think I explained both of them as well as I could. And that's just one race. That's, that's just the hundred free, um, which I consider to be one of my weaker, strong events. I think everyone could agree with that. Um, so it's tough starting off a meet with the pressure of, okay, is Caleb for real? Can you make the Olympic team? And then once that's all said and done, said and done, fast forward four weeks. All right. Now, can he get his first individual gold? And, you know, there's a lot on that moment of, I, I know the individual golds hold a, a bigger significance, but I was calm. I was, that was the calmest I think I was before any race that the Olympics individually, at least was hundred free. Cause I knew it was going to be close. I knew what guys to look out for. And all I had to do was, was execute. And if that wasn't good enough, so be it. But that's the best I had in that situation. Just happened to be six, one hundred ahead of Kyle. Pull us back to the four by one free your first race. Uh, put us in your, put us in your body. Uh, you split a 47.2. Um, where was your head at on that first Olympic gold? Yeah. I mean, gosh, we had, I was the only returning returner from that race four years ago. Uh, and I, I led off, oh gosh, it was terrible. I led off, I think 48 one in Rio. Um, so I knew, I knew what I had to do. I knew my goal, my goal coaches, I'm leading off this relay. This is what I do. This is my thing. My flat starts better than my relay start. And then you have Blake who has an incredible relay swing. Apple, who has an incredible anchor and relay swing. Like we had, we had all the parts there on paper, probably not. You're looking at the paper and going, who is everybody else besides Caleb? You know, and in our heads, it's like, no, no, we're, we're here to win this. We're here to dominate this race. Uh, and we get rolled out. I feel like every single time, I feel like every single time, you know, it's supposed to be the Russians. Um, and, and, you know, we, we don't, we don't play that. We, we know what the standard is here. We know what we're capable of doing. I swam with all of these guys in college. I think that's the amazing thing about American swimming is every single one of these guys have been my competitors. I mean, Bo was, Bo was ranked ahead of me. I think my senior year going to NCAAs and then Apple, Apple would snag me a couple of times, you know, at, at, at dual meets and whatnot. He'd have my number and like always races tough in season. Like these guys have all beaten me. I'm not undefeated even in within my own team. So having that, knowing that these guys are racers, knowing that I'm not even the best one on this team, you have to do your part and you want to do your part. So 47, two, my first one was always rocky. I wasn't super happy with it. Um, but the goal was to get a gold medal. So I had to forget about that. And I knew I had a very back, back heavy meet. So I thought I executed well. And I was fine with that being my first swim. I think here we were 49, excuse me, 47, six at 2019 world championships. Yep. So, uh, there we, were, we were, we were measuring, we were measuring from 2019 worlds and it was like 40. And you never know with, with an athlete when, uh, when they're going, moving into a second taper, it's all the games. So when we saw the 47, two, we were like, okay, he's on. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was that was so scary in nineteen. You know, forty seven six. Um, I, I was like, is this for real? And that was a meet where I found seven tenths. So in my head, I'm like, okay, forty seven two. Like, I right, maybe we can be forty six five. You know, you always want to go back to the other other meets and what happened there. But like I said, you can't do that because no meet is ever the same. No race is ever the same. No ready room. Everything's different every single day in the sport. The only thing you can fall back on is training and the mental approach. That's the only thing that does repeat. Everything's different, but you can, you can stay the same with the mental side of things. So that's what I really had to fall back on. Of course, it would have been great if I did drop seven tenths for my first climb. I would have been very ecstatic with that. But we're, again, Worlds, I had, the, I had the 50 fly as my first time in the water. So that was my first swim to shake it out. You know, it's like, it's different. It's really hard to fall back on things at certain times. Uh, I brought up Dressel Dissects, not for the hunter free, because I wasn't, I wanted that for your first Dressel Dissects, but hunter fly, hunter fly, uh, you know, jaw dropping swim, world record, 49, 45. Uh, it looked like you had turns like an 11, 12 age grouper. Um, and finished. <laughs> And finish. And finish. So, so, so break it down. Give us, give us a preview of Dressel Dissect's Olympic final hunter butterfly. All right. I'll give you, I'll give you a, a quick one here. So uh, I think everybody knew it was going to be me and uh, me. And, oh gosh. 
Christoph Milat. Oh, Milat. Thank you. Sorry. Hey, it's been it's been a long time. Um, I think everyone knew it was going to be us too. Liverpool. You know, uh, I did not. I did not anticipate him going forty nine, uh, especially not forty nine mid. Um, so it didn't throw me off at all. That's why I was genuinely happy for the kid and happy for the people watching that. You have two guys going under 50, which I think before that it was MP and Cabbage, correct? Yeah. And then I think the, what's behind that, was it Joseph Schooling's 50.3? Yeah. So you have, you have two guys not in a rubber suit, some young boys going 49 mid in the same race. Like you, you can't ask for anything better than that. Um, I knew he was going to come home strong. Uh, that was the fastest I had been home. So I was home in six, four, which is, which is insane, which is insane. Like the only person faster has been Michael, um, who was 40 or 20, 26, three. Um, and I was a 10th off that. Okay. And then Chris Lop comes home in six. Oh, like what? So I, I actually didn't see him that whole race. I did not see him at all. Um, I think our, I think our breathing may have been, um, you know, reciprocated. So we were in the same pattern. I couldn't, I couldn't see him. I couldn't even see any bubbles, which was strange. Um, I, yeah, the turn and finish absolutely butchered. I had room on both of those to take an extra stroke, especially the finish the finish back. I was like, this is, that was terrible. I probably could have had, you know, two more tents on there, but you know, I like to, I like to keep people on the edge of their seats. Um, so it, I was happy with the race. I, I didn't think I muscled it. If there was anywhere I muscled, it was probably the middle. I would say maybe that 60 to 85, I started to get, you know, a little bit muscly. And then once I put my head down, I started to lay into it a little bit more. Um, but man, that was one. It was more fun for me watching it back because then you could, you could see Christoph making his move and where I made my move. So it was more fun because I couldn't see him the whole race. I feel like I didn't even get to enjoy it as much as, as exciting as the race was. So def, I mean, I'm never that, that happy with any, any race, but it was fun racing Kristoff, you know, and I'm excited for the future, you know, to have one guy that's, that's that fast, um, who is going to, you know, I, I knew that was going to be the guy coming into it. Everybody knew that was going to be the guy going to be Kristoff, but for a guy that's wants to fly and now rips the hundred fly, like he's a really good butterfly. Worst turn, worst finish I've seen at an Olympic level. And still broke the world record, still won a gold medal. So the funny thing is we whipped everybody up. You I know, mean, we're, we're putting a lot of hype on, on the Olympic Games. And, and everyone was coming in with the Dressel predictions. And people were coming in with 40, 48-8, 48-9. Someone, someone dropped like a 48-2. And I'm scratching my head. I'm going, I don't think, I, you know, I'd love to see a 49 low. And um, I forget what I predicted, but it was something like that. But here's the thing. I mean – you're you're definitely within striking range. You're you're there with with your with your turn and your finish. You're you're forty nine one. Yeah, I mean, I think I think I swam probably a, I probably swam in that race a nine two a nine one, and I think I turned and finished probably a fifty three mid. Honestly, like if I'm being honest, it, it was bad. It was really really bad. And in that moment, you basically have less than a 10th of a second to make a decision. But by the time my hands reach out and I see where I'm at in the water, it's okay. Are you taking another stroke? Or are you ripping kicks into the wall? And both times I thought that was the most fitting solution. And when I watched the race back, I say that was not the most fitting solution. So you, you have such a limited window to make your move, whatever you decide to go with, that's what you have to go with. You cannot be, you cannot be on the fence about anything. So in the moment when your heart rates up up 200 and you're in an Olympic final and you hear the crowd going, make your decision and go with it. If it's the wrong one, if it's the wrong one done right, that's better. I did the wrong decision correctly and it worked out. Okay. I'm, I, this is not a question. This is just commentary. I think Christoph and me, like it's got it in his head that he can race you now, but what you got to do, cause you've got this gear is you got to go after his 200 fly just to mess with his head. Cause you can do it. We know you've been a 51 foot, one fifty six five unshaven. Just throwing it out. I was six. I was six, two. I was six, two. two. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Game on. Me. Yeah. All no, right. I mean, Christoph's got the two fly. He's got it. 
All right. So I, I don't mean to, to come in with two negatives because that wasn't a negative. You still, you still got the gold, the, the gold and the world record. And it was a, it was a, a hell of a swim. Always exciting. And that's all that matters on the Olympic stage. Mixed medley relay. 46.99. Open water swimming in the ocean. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You were in the ocean. What's going through your head when you, I mean, do you dive in and go like, there's like, are you trying to get us on the podium? Or are you still, I, I don't know what was happening in that, in, in your mind at that time. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm certainly not going to rule anything out diving in. I'm certainly not like a, a, I mean, then, then I might as well just not even dive in at all, but seeing where we were at, how far back we were, especially from first, I said, okay, I'm, I'm most likely, you know, just feeling out the race. I got to have some time, you know, being anchor. I was like, we're most likely not going to get a gold medal here, but I certainly did not rule out getting us on that podium. Um, and that's a tricky race. That was, I, I, I'm blaming nobody. Everyone swam, everyone swam their part. Shoot. Lydia's goggles fell off and she still, I mean, she was what, like two, three tenths off or what? Yeah. Like one or five flat one to attack. Yeah. And then what, what was she in the race? She wasn't one Oh four. Was she, or she one of, she was one Oh five flat individually. Okay. And I think she was one Oh five, two or one Oh five, three people wanted to attack Lydia because they're like, it's the obvious thing. Her goggles fell off and uh, like she, like people gained on her, but the best, the best way to swim that race is you put a guy on breaststroke or a guy on breaststroke. I mean, that's the biggest differential. If I split, I think if I split a 43, Oh, I think we, I don't even know if we win. If I split, no, we win it. No, it was, I think 45 flat, I think puts us in metal contention. I mean, I did the math. It was something, it was something impossible at, at this moment in my career. I'm fine with saying it like that. Um, and it's just, the, I mean, you have a guy, you have PD splitting 55. That's a huge, that's a 10 second dif differential, you know? So we executed as well as we could with the lineup that we had. And I will stand by the coaches with the lineup. We just had people better than us. And there's only, so, we executed as well as we could in that moment. You know, of course, of course you weren't happy with fifth. Are you kidding me? No, no one was happy with fifth place. If I really wanted to entertain people, I would just read the group text messages with all of our Olympic peers, the old ones, the ones with, with, with white beards going, you know, from, from like, I, I was hearing from Mark Spitz. I was hearing Summer Sanders weighed in, you, you name it. Everyone was weighing in on, on, on what was going on. And, and everyone, of course, you know, Monday morning quarterback, everybody knows better. The uh, it's um, so you're being diplomatic. We're going to leave it there. We're going to leave it there and we're going to move on. Uh, but you know, on this topic, the four by two it was was it, it was it a discussion or a conversation? You can be diplomatic again, but you know, a lot of folks were like, "Hey, we'd love to have seen Dressel on that four by two. That that was up for discussion until the day before that relay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's why I swam. In, that's why I swam in the morning at trials. That's why I swim it in season. I, I'm never going to rule out that relay. Um, but with what me and Troy ultimately decided on was I am more valuable at the end of this meet with how many more swims I still have coming. I'm more valuable to the team in that sense than putting me on the two free relay and us getting bronze. The great Britain was going to win that relay. I, I don't know if that sounds sorry or makes me sound like, I'm not believing. I don't believe in this team. The guys that they had on that relay were so impressive. You had two guys going, Duncan and, uh, shoot, uh, Dean. Tom Dean. Tom Dean going 140, 144. There's that's half the relay right there. Jimmy, I think, split a 145 low. Like, I'm fine with admitting there was a better team than us. Now I'm not saying that's, that's why I didn't do the relay, but I was more valuable to the team later on in the meet. Um, so that's, and, and it sucked. It sucked. I told Troy, I said, I don't want to make a decision that I'm going to regret the rest of my life. And he goes, did you ever swim the two free in college? I said, no. And I regret that for the rest of my life. And then he looked at me, he goes, have you ever won an Olympic individual medal? And that's, 
that's ultimately, I think, when when my decision was made. You know, it was right before the Hunter Free final. It could have helped me. I don't know. I I I don't know. I didn't swim it. I was I was fine with my decision in that moment, and it hurt me because I know if I was on that relay, I know we get a medal, but I don't know what happens to the end of my meet. It, it, I, I appreciate your candor, and uh, I think a lot of listeners do too. And I think that we all, I think that, I don't know if anyone's voicing it, but it's a, especially in our community where, where, you know, it's very swim nerdy. Uh, but I, this was something that was always in the back of my head during the Olympics, which was that we were, I saw a lot of emotion from you. I saw a lot of stress from you. I felt, I, I teared up a few times. It looked like you were on the edge. It looked like you were managing energy systems and it was emotional and it was, it looked like it was a lot. So I understand that your thought press thought your thought process on your choices. Yeah. I mean, and like I said, it, it was, it took a while. It took a, it took, it hurt. It hurt to say, to have a chance to swim on an 800 free relay for team USA at the Olympics to turn that down. It hurt me. And I, I stand by it. I believe I was more valuable if I let the boys who I also believed in to be able to have their moment and who I thought could have taken care of taking care of their job, it hurt. It was not easy at all. It, as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm still upset about it, but there's only so much you can do. I'm not, I'm not a robot. You know, I, I had a pack, I had a packed schedule and that that's the decision I was most comfortable going with, but it hurt. All right. I appreciate it. The, uh, let's, let's move on to something that let's move on to the 50 free. You're 50 free. I think that you won that race by that. You were 0.48 uh, ahead, ahead of everybody. You, that was the biggest margin you had on anyone in any of the events. What, what are you doing? Yeah, I want to, I want to tell everybody you're a 200 butterfly, but you, you know, it's like you get this 50 free thing you're always doing so fast and, and, it, and you're <laughs> killing my theory. <laughs> Dude, that, so that race, that was, it wasn't always the most sure of because I hate to word it like that, but I, that was the one I was most sure of. Um, you know, I had put up, what was I, 21 4 right after the 100 fly, like standing on the podium. I was like, okay, no one went faster than what I went after 100 meters of butterfly. Like, it's not arrogance. It's just I'm, I'm reading the numbers. I'm reading the numbers. So I was confident going to that race. I know I knew what I had to do to execute. I wasn't ruling out lanes three and four, Bruno and, and Flo. Uh, I think the coolest part about that race for me was seeing Bruno win a medal, honestly. Honestly, I thought I read the scoreboard wrong. I thought he beat me because he was on the lane line. I was like, did he Did he win? Am I reading this right? But the pure emotion he was showing, bronze medal to him, That his bronze medal was a gold medal. And, and it was so special seeing that because um, Bruno's such a great guy. He whoops me in season, goodness gracious, really fun to race. He's a little guy. He takes a lot of pride in his technique and he's got the 53 figured out. Um, and the passion that Brazilians show, I freaking love it. I love it. I didn't get to see his team area, but I bet they're all crying. He was crying. It was really special. And then um, racing next to, to Flo. I think that was the first long course race we've ever had next to each other. Uh, and I remember in 2012 watching this guy from lane one or lane eight, I forget where he was. He's on an outside lane, win a gold medal. Um, so it's, it's, it's still, it's still strange for me where the sport has taken me, you know, I'm, I'm racing the guys that I was watching win gold medals and I, I don't ever take that for granted. Um, so especially, you know, I mean, a couple of years from now, there, there might be a kid who is racing me and was like, this is the guy I was watching in, in 2020 win the 50 or, or, or something like that. I, I just, I, I would like to believe something, something like that would happen because with Nathan, even Nathan in 2012, watching him win the, the hunter free, uh, being able to swim on relays with the guy, like it's all so fascinating to me. I, I still feel like the rookie and I don't, I don't ever want to lose that mindset. So let's see here, D doing the math on the 50 free topic, you're be 27 in Paris, be 31 yeah. And, and Los Angeles, uh, do it. Do we go to Los Angeles and beyond? What don't say, you? don't say, don't say another one. Don't say this one. No, no. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to rule it out. Like I said, if I'm still having fun in the sport and I'm still learning about myself, I, I mean, I have a great relationship with the water right now. The, the water is never the problem for me. It, 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 it's just the baggage. There's a lot of baggage that comes with it, especially nowadays. There's more outlets for, 
social media. There's more outlets for, for interviews, um, the, the Instagram followers, like there's, there's more opportunity in a good way. And there's also a lot more baggage that comes with that. So if I'm still having fun in the sport and I'm still whooping kids, then shoot. I mean, why would I want to, why would I want want to retire you know that's not fair but i don't want to leave the sport on a sour note with the water that's the most important thing to me if i can end it then that's what my, i think that's what michael did i don't want to put words in his mouth but he was done after 2012 he was saying he hadn't even showered he hates water and then the sport welcomed him back in because he said hey we didn't end this on good terms um and then seeing the, the ending in london which i don't even know he may have won more medals in london i don't even know i have no idea but how he was in rio was how it was always meant to be. So I want to end my career on a good note with the water. It doesn't have to be at the Olympics, but just it's been a part of my life. I've had this relationship since I was five years old. Now it's been on and off, but that's the respect I want to leave with the sport because of what it's given me. Um, you know, the water is something, it's so powerful. It's so special to me. You know, that's, that's the, it's one of the best feelings ever is you dive into a pool and you go underwater and just hearing nothing nothing but you in the water. It's so, it's so special. It never gets old. It really, it never, never gets old. So I want to be able to have that the rest of my life and not just hate the water because I swam too long. If you followed the Rowdy Gaines wisdom of swimming, which is Mel, never stop doing your warm up. Just get in and warm up. If I were Caleb Dressel and I was just getting in and warming up, who knows what I would be doing at like 41 42 you could just warm up and you could you're going to be going sub 20 until you're 50 years old just you know just hanging out <laughs> 50 yard free so 50 yard free you're gonna be able to pop a sub 20 just just warming up and getting a suntan well i'm gonna one, we'll one up the deal let's see how long i can i can hit 18 until fair enough fair enough all right, let's let's uh, let's 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 close out your Olympics. You're at forty nine oh three. I think that was your split on the relay. Yes, it was. That was my best swim of the meet. That was my best swim of the meet. Yep. Um, so that, I mean, that I mean, you, you've heard. I'm not going to overkill it. Everyone's heard the interviews about. We sat down the night before. We said, "This is our group. Forget forget the drama. Forget people talking. These are the four guys that we're going to break the world record with." You know, everyone has swam a time at the Olympics where if we go that time, we crush the world record. Now, Murph got silver in the 100 back, uh, bronze in the 100 back, silver in the 200 back. Michael Andrew, he added time in the final of the 2 IM. Um, Apple had his last swim was the 800 free relay where he got put on fire, which those people can piss off. Everyone had had terrible swims. Terrible. They were terrible. Everyone had had terrible swims, uh, myself included, myself included. Um, but we knew there was something about going into that race where we just knew. We had the outside lane, which we planned, which we totally planned. That wasn't because um, the morning guys were trying to scare us at all. We totally planned that. Um, we had an outside lane. We knew we were going to have water, uh, choppy water, which was perfect because we knew GB was going to be out front after the breaststroke. That's, that's all numbers. It's all numbers. There's no politics there. There's no drama there. That's all numbers. And it's exactly how it played out. But I knew, I knew I was going to have to lay down something fat. Um, so I was a little bit calmer going out. Um, I don't even know what my splits were on it, but I knew when I was having that race, I was like, this is going to hurt so bad and i'm so excited so just coming in executing and as soon as my hands touched the wall and i looked up and i saw apple where his kicks were compared to duncan i was like we're we're not going to be the group that screws this up i was like we're about to go world record it works it's unpacked you did it you did it you we appreciate you dropping and taking time to unpack your olympic experience uh i i feel bad because you know and this this goes into my my, my final topic but it's you know, this, this is, um, you know, you had your first Olympics. You know, it's rare when people win gold and they go to their first. You know, Phelps, when, when he was a kid, when it did, a lot of people go to their first. They don't typically medal. You picked up two gold medals, but this was the one where you, you hit it. You know, the vibration was perfect. And now you're in that Olympic glow and the white hot spotlight is on you. And, uh, and I think everyone expects you to, to 
to to do what you're doing now, which I know you're extraordinarily busy and you're and you're working the business side of of your career. So how does this uh, this Olympic aftermath and the demands on your time? How does that figure into an ISL season this season, season three? Yeah, I, I mean it's been it's been really it's been really tough, um, especially because it's not it's not my personality. Um, I. I like going home and, and not talking to anybody. Um, I, I, again, I, I genuinely, I don't care about the Instagram followers. I don't care what game shows want to have me on. I don't care what talk shows want to have me on. I like swimming fast. I like, I like going in the water, putting my head underwater and just sitting there in silence. That's what I need sometimes. I don't do that all the time. I also like being around my, my circle. So it's been tough. You know, I'm not, I wasn't designed to, to handle this stuff, but it's certainly something I'm learning. Um, if I'm being honest, 2019 afterwards was in some ways a lot harder because I just came off a great meet and I was like, I have to repeat that at the Olympic level. Um, so 2019 was, was different. I mean, I broke down pretty hard after 19 and I've, I have certainly had my moments here. Um, I'm looking forward to ISL because I know a lot of people are going to be in the same boat as me. And that's, that's the one thing I can hold on to. You know, it's hard having people here. You know, I have, I know I have Kieran and Bobby, um, but right now they probably, they probably love it. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe they don't, maybe they hate it as much as I do, but I know when I get to ISL, the best way to get, to get back into racing shape is to race. So it'll be, it'll be an easy, quick fix. It's not easy. It's going to hurt, but I'm not worried about times. Um, I'm worried about getting back on track. And I honestly, I think being in a pool is the best way to do that for me. So, I'm, so I, I am looking forward to ISL. It's weird. I don't know if I'm ready for it, but I'm looking forward to it. So are you going to, is it, is it a, are you going to be participating in a full season with the Cali Condors or is it, is, are you, are you, are you going to, are you going to take it easy? You're going to, you're going to be missing some matches. So a lot of it, we're going to, we're going to have to play by year. You know, I, I don't want to just, commit to something and have my whole life turned to crumble because I got, I got greedy and I, I wanted to get in the water and I wanted to make money. That That's not fair to myself. Uh, I know now more than ever, I need to put, put myself first right now. I just came off probably one of the highest highs of my life and it's, it's been rough right now. Um, so I, I need to keep an eye on that. Um, but as of right now, I will be in Italy. I will be competing for, I think it's the first, first two matches. Um, and if I need to come home, I'll come home. And I, and I think that's, that's the fairest option for not only myself, but for the Condors as well. I, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people are going to, we're going to have a lot of examples of that and uh, which will make the season more interesting because it, it might, it might crack some daylight for some other talent to, to step up and race. But uh, so, so what are you doing to take care of yourself right now? Is, is it just go, 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 appearance, 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 media, media, media? You know, is there, are you finding time for yourself? Um, I, I've been, I've been trying, um, you know, it's, it's, it gets tough. It's, it's, my options are, do I want to, do I want to stay at home and, and enjoy my time here? Or do I want to make it a, a run to Vegas? Um, so it's tough. Like I, I pretty much have three weeks to cram in as much as possible, you know, because it's just not, not possible in season with swimming, uh, especially leading up to an Olympic year. So I'm trying to watch everything the best that I can. Um, and, and sometimes the, the best vacation I can get is just being at my house and doing some yard work or little things like that, you know, taking, taking Jane outside and, and throwing the dummies for her. So it just depends. I know sometimes I need to get away. The Vegas trip was, was awesome. I mean, we got to see some shows. We got to go to some great dinners. Like we got to lose some money. I was only, I was only down. Like, I think I came out of Vegas. I think me and Megan were down 200, $200. And dude, that's a, to me, I think 20 bucks was a lot of money. So like that one kind of hurt, but and, and it's so dumb. I only play, play roulette. I'm too scared to play poker at the big tables. Um, so we lost it all on roulette. So I don't think it's that bad. Definitely not the worst losses coming out of Vegas, but Vegas was great. 
Um, and sometimes I just need to be around my people. Sometimes I need to just call my mom. It depends. I'm trying to take care of myself the best I can, but I've never been in this situation. So I don't know what I need. So it's, it's a little confusing. It sounds like you're doing it right. And if, if, if you hurt when you lose 20 bucks, I, I, I like that mentality. And, and that tells me we're in, in the rarefied air that you're living in now that you're going to hang on to <laughs> what you've earned. And, and that's good. And, 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 and just, in, I don't want to read into this too much, but it sounds like we can count on, we can count on some, some, some Dressel star power through Los Angeles, all things considered going well. Do you have any final thoughts? I'm good to go. I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. I mean, of course I would like to compete on home soil. That would be a dream. That would be a dream. I wish we could have done it when I was in my prime. Maybe I'll be in my prime when I'm 30 something. Who knows? My voice is still pretty high pitched. So maybe I'm still going through some puberty stuff right now. Who knows? I'm hoping at that point, I'm just swimming one lap of the pool. Like forget this hundred, forget this 200 stuff. Forget this hundred stuff. Hopefully I'm just doing one lap of the pool. 